back at a meeting and he said, I don't want to take a census. I'm not going to take, you can't do a census, but you can do a census. You have to do, and uh, there's a lot of things you can do. I don't want to go into it, but if I had the option to do it, I would not be afraid to not go with a, go with a list of all the apartments. Why do we have to go out? Why they, do have to go out? They, because management does what the board tells them to do, unless it's illegal. No, let, let's say the board approves it. Why couldn't No, do? they're not, it's not in their contract. It's not in their contract. Not in their contract. <laughs> we need to know who's living in every apartment. We need to know why people are coming into the village on bicycles, off the bus, they're walking through the broken gates, and they're going somewhere. We see people coming behind the building. Yeah, you, not her bike, not her bike. <laughs> no, no, she got up there, she got up there. But, but. How do you propose to find out who lives in every apartment? There's no How would I do it? Yeah, how would you do it? I'll tell you, if you ask me to do it tomorrow, yeah, I got have an idea. All right. I'll okay. I, I can. I get some nice lady volunteer and a nice man volunteer. I give them the list of every who's in, who owns every apartment and every rental. Now I hire a Broward County Sheriff off duty and he goes around and knocks on every door with them. I don't care what it costs. And he knocks on the door and they're going to open the door and they're going to talk to these people. And they're going to have to give identification. And when they see a police officer in a uniform, or he says, this is a police officer, but you're these people from the village, they're, they're suspicious that you're trespassing. We, get, we check everyone in the community. We hire two or three. We get a few committees out. We'll find out. Everyone stop us, and then we'll know. And, and this, is, this is how I would do it tomorrow. So you pay a cop, you pay him $25 an hour to his, the sheriff, and he walks door to door. You do, well, I get 11 cops, we do 11 buildings, who cares? That's it, that's the way I would do it. And you would get it done. And when you find somebody's there, you gotta go into the legal process. And you got a lot of problems there. Because let's say Michael Schenkel lets somebody go in to apartment N1N, and they have never been approved by the association. And Elan Weiss is collecting money. I know that Elan Weiss co collected money from Penny Friedman, who was in N1N last year. I don't know if any of you knew Penny Friedman, right? And I spoke to Penny on the phone, and she, I, I said, Penny, who, who was the check made out to while you were a, uh, a tenant there for six months? She said, I made it out to Elan Weiss. Not rec no record of it. There's no record in our books. So they've been doing it illegally. You have to stop these people. Now you add those people in, and that's going to bring your numbers up on how many rentals you have. Now you're going to come, and people, people like someone who's living in Nottingham one end now, it could be hard to get them out. Because if they have a driver's license with their address in, how do you keep them out of the village? The only way you can prevent these things from happening is act immediately, have a grievance committee, find the owner, $100 a day up to $1,000, and make it tough for him to bring anyone into the community ever. Well, this costs money. You don't have any money. You don't have what? Money. Huh? All this costs they money. You don't have money to do it. Who doesn't? We need a bill. No. You don't have money. No. You're wrong. We had plenty of money. Money was wasted. We are wasting money today. We have a management company here that doesn't belong here. We have a manager that is get, costing us $80,000 a year. If you go back a few years, I don't know if Steve Mason is still here. You hear Steve? Oh, too bad. Because this is no secret between me and his boss. We talk to his boss and we tell him. They're, they're on thin ice here because they're costing us a fortune. We have a manager that doesn't patrol the community. He's on the phone. He does 200 emails a day. And we're, not, and we're paying, it's costing us $80,000 a year for that. 
However, we don't need all the service that we're not getting. We're not getting. We're paying it. We're paying for services that we contracted for and have not been provided. If we got rid of the management company and hired a financial management company only, it would cost us by the unit. It used to be years ago, three and a quarter, three and a half dollars a unit per month. Now, maybe it's up to five dollars a unit per month. And they would do, collect all your money, make all your financial reports, and do everything. But we don't need a company that has five accountants here, and another district, senior district manager, another manager, another manager, levels of people coming down. We're paying for this guy's salary who was just here. We want a smaller company that we can talk to the boss, that we don't have layers of management. And we'll save maybe up $75,000 a year immediately. Yeah, I'd like, to say, I'd, like to say something, I'd like to say something about that too, Scott. Um, if we self-manage, we can't, there's no way we could possibly be doing any worse a job than being done right now. And I don't care what anybody says. Because there's nothing being done right now. So uh, the, the managers, he, he works about three and a half days a week. He's on vacation now for another couple of weeks. And every time you go in the office, nobody can see him. Nobody can get in touch with him. He doesn't call anybody back. We can't do any worse if we manage ourselves. They just kept, they kept two uh, good people in the office to, to take phone calls, take complaints. We can't do any worse, believe me. We'd save over $100,000 a year. Okay, so... Let me just add one thing. Uh, you know, let me add to what Danny is saying. He's 100% right. We happen to have two good people in the office now. One of them comes from KMW. One of them comes from Danny's church, who works only three days a week. We could convince her to work five days a week. We could get an office manager, because outside, George is doing it anyway. This man has not been in a golf cart, maybe I'm lying, but once or twice. He should be in that golf cart every day and writing up all the things wrong with all our buildings. The reason he's not in a golf cart is he physically can't drive a golf cart because he has a disability. And that is not for us to worry about because when he was interviewed, he denied that he would have any problem fulfilling the job physically. That means we should have fired him as soon as we found out he couldn't have done it. Uh, in answer to Irene's question about the we don't have money, 100% right, we don't have money. The reason, but uh, firing Susie was not the answer. Right. We suggested to the board that instead of, we didn't know this, this was a surprise trick that was pulled by Francis Mesero to these district management who left that day. He's the one who personally did it. But Susie could have filled in a part of her week by working in the office. And she could have been doing her social work and working in the office and everyone else would have been happy. Now we don't feel like going to any social media. Okay, so we're broke now. I've been working, Stu and I have been working on financial analyses of the documents we get monthly, the paperwork, and in the latest one, we found checks signed by one board member, and we told the management company, What's going on there? They said it's impossible. And they send me a letter, an email saying it's not true. So I told them the check numbers. And then this guy, Steve Mason, said, you were right, Scott. They shouldn't be doing that. He didn't know about it. Why do we have one signature on a check ever? That's not how to protect your money. Anyhow, little things like that. But the important things that are in here that we study every month, and Arthur studies it, he's got his own analysis, but mine was very simple. We're losing thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars a month for money that are not the money that is not being collected from the deadbeats. Yes. And and this is for July thirty-first. It shows that maintenance alone at the end of July, nine, more than ninety days late, was four hundred thousand dollars. The total delinquency listed here at the top is seven hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars. You can come up and look at it. This is going on and on, but nobody did anything about it. We're going 
Those names up in publication, they should be. No. Huh? Those names should be published on the board. Yes. They should yes. be put into the Talk to the paper. president. They should yeah. be put everywhere. Yeah. For the people, for the people. You can get a copy. Go and ask them. That's, Frank, that's why we're here tonight. To tell you what's going on. Stop. So they were snowed in on the first floor. They're in seven thousand dollars over the owners. They're in a legal wreck where they're just moving in right now, and no one's I, there's nobody to call at the office. I've sent something to all the board. Nobody's doing anything. Can smell a scene. Four other apartments where people are moving in. They're illegal renters, and nothing gets done. You can email. You can call the office. You can do whatever you want. Nothing happens. Nothing and they're the ones that are moving in. Who are they paying the rent? How are they getting through our gate? And the one has a temporary pass, but I know that that owner, because I got this from the office. We have a million problems here, but the bottom line, we got every kind, every kind of violation of our rules is happening in International Village. All right, there's absolutely Let me, Scott, let me just say, let me answer this young lady's question, how they're getting through the gate. Does anybody here know who's in charge of security at the moment? I'll give you a hint. Michael Shanko. You know who's, who's the advisor for sales and leasing? Michael Shanko. You know who's the only one that talks to the lawyer on delinquent accounts? Michael Shanko. You want me to continue? It all points to one person. Michael Shanko is running and destroying IV. I take it back. Destroy. Now we've got to build it up. It is destroyed at this moment. Listen, we, we are, are going to have a tough time coming out of this. These numbers don't lie. Yeah. I just want you to know that I, along with many others, know of the illegals that come in and come out. They may stay a week, they may stay a day, they pay nothing, and they have their ways of getting and we've got to stop it because a lot of them come from prisons. They have not been checked. They're not good people. And you don't want them as your neighbor. But that's, in my mind, that's priority. Do people get into the gate? Anyone can get in. Just wave to the guard. You get in, tell them that any kind of bubble mice and you're in. Any time you can the exit, nobody's going to stop you. No, there's no... Years ago, believe it or not, and here's a way to save a little money, we had our own security company. We were paying too much for a security company, so we had our own guys, and we had them for years. And, and they were there, they were familiar, they knew everything, and we had a very tight security. And we didn't have problems like we have today. But we, we offered this to the, to the majority board members. Nothing, simple, that's it. Nothing is gonna be done. Bottom line is, this money that we've lost is not recoverable. We lost it. Now you just set, take home. You, you, can waive, you can waive the late fees because that's not really money lost. But the, the maintenance and the assessment money that wasn't paid as of July 31st is $400,000 in maintenance and $128,000 in assessments to pay the loan that all of us have to make up. That's 528000 I guarantee it's $30,000 more now. It's now 550 that are 90 days late. And how many of the 60 days late are going to become 90 days late? And we got, we're in a catch-22. Now the board has to get money, and if they ask for money, there's people who are not going to be able to pay. There's a lot of people not going to be able to pay these, these uh, maintenance and assessment increase. Assessment and maintenance. I, I, have been, I have been listening to this for a long time now. Who is supposed to be the person or persons responsible for collecting that money or for enforcing the foreclosures if they don't? That's a very simple answer. Number one, when Scott and I were elected to the board, the first thing we said is we need a group of committees. One of them was a collection committee, which I volunteered to head. And they said, you're not allowed to call people. And they gave me a hard time. You can't do it, so I didn't do it. 
I guarantee you it wouldn't be rosy because the economic situation was different than it is now, but it wouldn't be in the situation we're in now. We also have a collection agency and attorney who, in my opinion, is if he isn't the worst, he's probably in the top 10 in the state of Florida. There are many good collection agencies out there, but they insist upon being in bed with this guy. Again, I'll tell you why. The initials of Michael Schenkel is his buddy. End of scenario. Okay, you can leave Michael Schenkel. <laughs> He's done plenty. Death, but but factual. Uh, Stuart is right. It was 20 months ago that we met in the attorney's office. Joe, Joe Frederick was there. And we said we need to have a foreclosure prevention committee. 20 months ago, I swear. We said we need a legal committee. We need a finance committee. we got to change the amendments. Nothing was done. So we had ample time. Had we had a foreclosure prevention committee, we could have probably saved it because we, we know some things. Now, you can commit bigger crimes when you're running, handling people's money by omission than you can by commission. In other words, you can waste it on things, but if you forget to do things that you're supposed to, that's a bigger crime. We took $7 million loan from Wachovia we drew down $6.4 million. We left $600,000 untouched. Watch this now. And we charged the unit owners, the unit owners were charged, I wasn't a part of that, 8% interest when the actual interest was seven and a quarter. Overcharged the unit owners three quarters of a percent on $7 million. Now, on June 12th, 2008, the manager gets a letter from Wachovia. And the letter says, you have to take this line of credit, it wasn't a loan, it was a line of credit, and you have to convert it to a loan by June 28th. We never heard about it, and we failed to make the date. And when we failed to make the date, after they failed to make the date, they tried to borrow a couple hundred thousand dollars for repairs, and they said, you're too late. So, you want to still do it? We can call in the loan tomorrow. But we'll give you an extension to $3,000 for month. And then next month, we'll give you another extension to $3,000. And we're paying through the nose, and we're not getting it. We could have had that $600,000. We had paid our loan down so far in advance, it wouldn't have cost the unit owners one penny more. So by omission, we lost $600,000. Now, in my opinion, if we had that today, we wouldn't be looking for one month's assessment. We wouldn't be looking for it because we'd have the 600 less whatever we have used for some minor maintenance. Take away the waste and the other things, we'd have been better off. But that's not the end of the story. Four months later, Jerry Miro was president. And Jerry Miro, decides when he gets president, he wants to sue, the first thing he wants to sue is sue the lawyers who are running the Pegasus lawsuit for our sake, who are trying to get us a million dollars. So he asks the manager to drive him over, so the manager's his chauffeur, takes him over to the lawyer's office, and he comes in there and he wants to sue him, like a bull in a Chinese shop. But here's what Jerry did wrong. Using the manager as a chauffeur was a disgrace. He could find his way around. He's been around. He's been all over the world. He knows how to get around the bit here. The big mistake was that we had an SBA loan, 4%. This is last year. So he became president on October 1st. October 31st was the deadline to go to the SBA and say, hey, I borrowed a million. I owe you 350, 400,000. Give me the other 600,000. He could have got the other 600,000 like that. So take the first 600,000 and then five or other 100,000. We could have had a million one and still be paying the same monthly payments. Or maybe a little more. A couple of few cents or a couple of dollars. Arthur, correct? Correct, yes or no? I'm trying to state. You're not misleading, but I think some of these problems we have stems since January, February of this year. We've been sitting back 
by KMW scooters left and right. That's a different story. I'm Where talking by been? omission. We could have had a million one, and we would have need, needed. We had the whole. We'd have had the SBA. So you'd be paying ten to fifteen dollars a month more. So the two. So in 12 months, that would have been $180. That's not even one month's maintenance that they want. But that was wrong. So there's many ways to fail. Scott, that's they failed us that way. I can't let you keep talking like that because then you may be able to talk to these people. You can talk to people who don't. You can don't talk. I'm talking the facts as I know them. You want to refute them? But yes, it's not really fair because these people don't know the other. It's not fair what you did to them. Well, listen, Scott, that's that's what's not fair. You could have got that other five hundred thousand. I have I have written to you, Scott, and answered these questions in depth and explained to you that borrowing an additional six hundred thousand only has to be repaid. So while it may be true that we might not have had to pay any more per month, we would of course have to pay for a longer period of time because you didn't get that six hundred thousand dollars. How much do you think we would have gotten, Jerry? You had to pay the six hundred thousand dollars plus interest back. So Hold it, Jerry. You have no idea what you're talking about because we're paying now seven million dollars and we only borrowed six four. Go in the office and find out. Six. What? Six million four was what we borrowed, Arthur. Okay, okay. Let's get down. Paying for seven okay. million. Let's get on to the next subject, please. Arthur, let's get on to the next issue. We're broke. There's no way to get the money. We shouldn't be in this position now. Let's finish the amendments. Then I want to talk about assessments, okay? Okay. A proposal number four. Wait a second. Wait a second. Am I entitled? You're, you're sitting there abusing poor Michael Shankle, who's been working hard for the village. That's your opinion because he's working for your bucks. Am I entitled to my opinion? Go ahead and put some stock in your mouth. Right. Right. Uh, I didn't say it's not my opinion, but it's my opinion based on what I see. Okay? Well, how did you see anything when you weren't even here for the last couple of months? Go ahead, let him talk. I don't say a word. As far as what you're talking about, the money is concerned, Mike, and I, I've answered this, uh, these questions to you in writing, and I much prefer to answer in writing. Jeremy, please, Mike, please. That was not I much prefer to answer these questions in writing because then it can't be twisted around. All this conversation that I'm listening to here is really an abomination. Uh, I, it's easy to pick on people. Uh, I don't want to start uh, picking on Scott, or I don't want to start picking on Joe. I don't want 